technology, diversity, wine, the redwoods, and everything in between. Welcome to the Northern California Bay Area, and one show takes you inside the real estate that makes it all happen. This is By the Bay. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to By the Bay. I'm your host, Dan Anchetta, and I'm really grateful that you're here. Um, I have a really amazing uh, guest today. Uh, our guest today is Sergio Rodriguez. He is the founder, owner, operator, and second generation builder uh, at Integrum uh, Construction. I say that right? Integrum. Think it, of integrity. Integrum Construction. And it's really cool how we met. So um, yeah. we were just talking before the show. Somehow you got connected to the podcast. Someone that you follow or or something liked uh, one of the one of the reels or something that was posted and you started listening and you reached out through uh, Instagram and we connected last week and I'm like, Hey man, come on the show. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So, um, great. Thanks for making the drive up here. Cause you're from the South Bay, Sunnyvale, Sunnyvale. or are you living, not from, but living down there. Yep. Yeah. Right? I've been in Sunnyvale since 2015. Took me about two hours to get here. It's not too bad. Nice. I'm sure you took a lot, took care of a lot of business on the, on the That's way. Right. That's right. So, uh, talk right into that microphone and tell us about, tell us about your company, right? So you guys are doing all sorts of really amazing projects down in the peninsula. So tell us kind of what your background is and kind of what your, what your business focus is. Yeah. So grew up in East Bay, Richmond, California. My dad's been a builder for about 35 years. Nice. Maybe, maybe a little bit more now. Doing single family track. stuff? Yeah. He was a single family, um, you know, started off as a handyman in the eighties, um, and then became a painter. Then he got into building and then so my whole life, you know, I just grew up in this industry. You know, at the dinner table, we didn't talk about, we talked about construction. Nice. And that's what we talked about. Uh, and real estate as well. And we'll, we'll get into that. But, you know, kind of deviated from construction and got into uh, managing multifamily housing properties. Okay. And doing CapEx projects. Okay. And <clears throat> I started, you know, I got into that for about almost 10 years. And then I started my first company. And um, that company was a mainly a, multifamily housing rehab company where we would go in and we would do government projects for HUD housing. We would renovate, you know, 20, 30 units. We would do exterior cap uh, improvements, uh, which was cool. That's really interesting. So these are projects that were financed by HUD? Financed by HUD. So managed by HUD. Okay. You know, everything was, you know, really strict. Banks were involved. Um, and so that lasted from 2014 to about 2018. Okay. And then I sold off my shares of the company. And Got it. And so now you and your wife run Integrum. Yeah. So in 2019, I started Integrum Construction and it was at the, literally before the ADU movement really took off. Okay. You know, in California, people were building ADUs even before 2019. Yeah. We were talking just before this that uh, I have a, a deal right now and we're looking, we're looking at some permits and these permits for a granny flat, right? Go right. back to like to the seventies. Yeah, so like this is not a new idea. It's just, it's, it's kind of everything old is new again. It's kind of recycling its way through. Right. And there's a bunch of new laws and stuff that are coming into play. Right. Right. Exactly. They, they <clears> made <throat> it, they made it state law where a, a, almost every residential house can build up to maybe two units, two right. units per lot. So, uh, we, we started in 2019 and we never look back, you know, okay. I, I think we actually did a count from 2019 to now we built about 85 ADUs. Wow. That's a ton. Yeah. I mean, just, just number of housing units being built. I mean, it takes time to build these things. Which yeah. I think people don't appreciate about accessory dwellings is that all of the main expensive rooms are being built. Right. A kitchen right. is expensive. Bathrooms are expensive. You know, it's really cheap to build bedrooms. Low dense. Right. Like you don't drywall, a little bit of electrical, right. studs. Studs, done. That's Carpet, it. That's paint, it. Mm -hmm. simple. Mm -hmm. But like kitchens, bathrooms, you got plumbing mm -hmm. and tile work and fixtures and like, dude, it's, it's expensive. expensive. Very expensive. So all of the expensive rooms are still being built, and which, why is, which is why it's expensive. But I'd like to really kind of dig into, so your focus is building accessory dwellings in a high cost area. That's right. right. So you're in Silicon Valley. When people look at, you know, those charts you see online, like most, most expensive housing markets, that's one of them like in the country. 
So why are people building accessory dwellings there? Who are your clients? And kind of walk us through that. Yeah. So um, when we started Integrum in 2019, um, we really wanted to focus on a specific uh, clientele. Um, we didn't want to be nickel and dimed by clients because we felt like we were bringing such high value to a customer because of our experience, um, because of the speed. I mean, we built ADUs. I'm no kidding. I can show you. I mean, we posted it online and we had a few GCs saying I was BSing them and it, I showed them pictures of the job card because it shows like our sure. first inspection to the last inspection. We built a 500 square foot ADU from foundation to finishes in five weeks. That's crazy. In five weeks. The, and the city of Sunnyvale, the inspector was like, this is a record. This is, this is, this is crazy. Yeah. I've, I've dabbled in some, in my career and for working for a, a developer some years ago. Yeah. Things don't happen that fast. No, no. But again, the circumstances have to be right. Sure. We don't do this all the time. Right, right. Right. No, you're not this guaranteeing is, a five week turnaround. No, no, so if you're listening, five week turnaround. No, no, no. no, no. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we average three months. Okay. Average from 500 to 800 square feet. Average three months. Uh, well, that way you can turn out a lot of units, right? Because how many crews are you running? Right now we have about 25 guys. We do anywhere between five and 10 projects at a time. Every month, open up about five to 10 new projects. That's a ton. Every month. I mean, that pipeline's got to be crazy. It's, it's, we're doing pretty good right now. So, um, I mean, yeah, I'm mean, just thinking about the management of that, making sure that on a, on a three month timeline, you can't be waiting for nails, right? Like stuff has got to be there, ready to go. Ready to go. A lot of planning. Um, we have brought in a new, uh, operations manager who's helping me just manage just on the, you know, on a eagle's eye view of how the projects are going. Yep. Keeping them moving. Right. right. Keeping them moving. Um, procurement person. And we're bringing on another project manager as well at the end of the month. So that I'm, we're excited about that. That's amazing. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of volume. So when we start back to the question, when we started Integrum, we wanted to make sure that the client saw our value. Uh, and so most of our clients are engineers. Interesting. I would say about 70% of our clients are engineers. Professional, professional engineers. Product managers. Okay. Um, biotech. Okay. Um, you know, Facebook, Google. So why are they, lawyers. why are they building? I mean, I, I've, I have a number of clients who work, you know, at those places you've just mentioned mm -hmm. and they make great money and they've got, you know, they've got their restricted stock units where they've, you know, they're making, they're not, in, in addition to their salary, they're getting issued, you know, uh, company stock. So some of these comp plans are making um, seven figures, you know, being a, being a software engineer. Why build an ADU? I'd say 70% of the clients that we build for is not for rental use. Interesting. What are yeah, they using them mom for? Mom and dad. Okay. Mom and dad. Uh, Multi-generational housing, nannies. Nannies. Au pairs. Sorry. At that level, they're not nannies, a, they're au pairs. A few, yes. a few au pairs. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's one client who's a Stanford researcher. His daughter's autistic <clears throat> and she's a little older now. Got it. And they need their space. And I understood my daughter's autistic. Uh -huh. So I, that really, you know, touched me. And so we're really trying to help this, this client get yeah. this ADU designed and built and ready to go. That's cool. They could live on site and still have, you That's know. That's right. A, she could yeah. have her helpers and, you know. And still have some privacy and, have privacy and mom and dad can have theirs as they well. They don't sleep. Right. Yeah. Hey, he thanks for being sleep. open about that. That's yeah. a, that's a real tough subject. So thanks yeah. for Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, no. And, you know, we try to relate to our clients, you know. Yep. So, you know, he doesn't sleep because she, she's, she's up till 2, 3, 3 a.m. And, you know, poor, poor guy's yeah. got, you know. He's, he's tired and, you know, they want to have their personal space. So, um, that's usually the purpose of, of the ADUs that we're building for, okay. you know, it's just, it's mainly for personal use right here and there. It's for rental. Okay. But for the most part, they don't need the rental income. Right. That makes that I mean, that was, I think the genesis of the question that makes a lot of sense to me. You know, we're not trying to build out a unit cause we need the income. What would be really interesting is to see how these evolve over time. Like, I think maybe just. Maybe it's a romantic idea or whatever, but I like the idea of building accessory dwelling, using it for rental income, or as your kids age out, you know, giving them that kind of adjacent nest to, to mature into, and then eventually move out on their own instead of living in their bedroom, or whatever. And then in the future, 
as you get older, you don't want to live in the big house anymore, but you still own the property. Like you could move into the accessory dwelling, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. And have that single floor, single level, smaller, kind of only the essentials and then rent out the big house for supplemental income as you enter retirement or something like that. Right. Right. Well, I have one client in, in a really prominent neighborhood, probably one of the wealthiest neighborhoods in California. And we built, so grandma lives in a huge estate. Grandpa died. She's alone in the house. Got it. Her grandson barely could afford to buy a place in the Bay Area. I mean, he, he could probably, you know, it, it's tough. Yep. But he grew up in this neighborhood. So mm. instead yep. of having to leave the state yep. or go into the ghettos, right? Sh she can build him an ADU and they can figure that financing sure. between them and he can stay. stay so here. that's what we did. Him yeah. and his wife built him a huge, beautiful ADU in the backyard. And he's, you know, helping, you know, watching over his grandma. Yeah, and he gets to be there place. to help grandma yeah. and, you know, and, and kind of help take care of the house and, exactly. and make sure that grandma's safe and be exactly. a resource for her. It makes, it, I mean, it makes total sense, mm -hmm. right? So I know that there's a bunch of law changes. I think well, we had Ryan O'Connell on the show um, yeah. a couple weeks ago uh, from How to ADU. I know there's been a bunch of changes, but interesting to hear your perspective as a, of a, a builder. Are you going in like helping them develop the plans or are you getting plans handed to you? How does that like, are you design, design build or what, what is your kind of walk us through a normal process for a, that's a great question for a project? No, I mean, we get calls, we get about five to 10 calls every week on asking for design build. We're not design build. We're not design build because. To me, in my opinion, and I've said this on record, we don't, I don't believe in that model. Okay. I think there's too much conflict there. And I think the builder should be the builder. Okay. And the designer should be the designer. So these projects are coming to you kind of shovel ready. They, yeah. Well, they come in two phases. Okay. If a client says, I don't have anything, I don't know where to start. We'll introduce them to one of our design partners. Okay. So they can, you don't have to come to you fully formed. No. You can say, hey, I'd like the idea yep. of building something. What do I do next? Yes. And you'll say, great, let me introduce I'll you take, to- I'll take it from there. Got it. Yeah, I'll introduce you to, <clears throat> there's about, there, we only really recommend about four architectural firms. Okay. That we, for ADUs. So we'll introduce them to the design partner. The design partner will take them under their wing, give them a feasibility plan, give them a design, they'll approve it, then they'll, that'll boomerang back to me. Right. And then, hey, we're going to submit these plans. Give them, a, give them a budget. And so we'll give them a budget. They usually send the contract with us. And then two, three months later, we'll get the permit. We'll go. Got it. So, so yeah. So you don't have to be researching your own, you know, firm and trying to figure all that out. You can come, come to your company without a plan and you'll Correct. help shepherd them through the entire That's process. Right even though you're not the one who's doing the actual design work. That's right. Got and it. and that's not always a bad thing because sometimes we'll catch things before it gets submitted to permitting and we'll be like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Look at this foundation plan. Are you aware of this? This is going to cost you a lot of money. Right. So you can do some, oh, va some value submit. engineering exactly. in, into that process. Yep, we value engineer. Nice. Love it. Um, so your, so your, your company's main focus is accessory dwelling construction, but you're also doing some remodel work as well, right? Yeah. So 60% of our business is ADUs. Okay. Um, we do about five to 10 remodels a year and we don't do kitchen remodels or bathroom remodels. We do extensive remodels. So okay. we'll gut the house at an addition. You so know, you're not coming in because I need uh, a new, no. you know, a tub and no. that sort of thing. That's like a different company no. that you're going to refer. Out That's to. right. But That's you're, right. if you're looking for like down to the stud, remodel, moving rooms, adding rooms. Correct. Like big projects. That's right. That's, that's where you, that's where your market is. That's really how I grew up in th those kind of projects, you know, so that I'm more familiar with those. And those are, those are difficult. Dude, those, those are tricky. You know, they, that's like plastic surgery work. Dude, it's so hard. We just did, um, gosh, it's been three years now since we finished our project, almost three years. Oh, people don't understand. It's so stressful. It's like, how is a remodel more expensive than building a new home? Oh, it, oh, it is. The, oh, the, try it. Yeah, it is wildly. And well, because so for us, we our house was built in the 60s and it was like 
okay, so in our original plan, we're going to replace these, you know, this window and this window, because these are the rooms that we're really, you know, working on. And then I'm looking at it and I'm like, well, there's only 14 windows in the entire house. So we're going to replace five of them and not the other nine. We got to do the other nine and have all the same vintage windows because the stucco guy is going to come out here and do patchwork anyway. So why am I not going to like replace them all and then replace them all. And then you take that idea and you just magnify it over everything. Right. And it's like, well, this floor has to be fixed and this has to be fixed and this, and it's just like, and it adds up. Oh, there's cracks in the old stucco. Oh, there's old this drywall here. And then, and the next thing you know, it's it's just a domino effect. You know, it never stops. So the interesting, interestingly, I think in hindsight, because we didn't do like rip everything out, start over. And I think we probably should have, right? I think we probably should have gone down to the stud and just redone everything because now we have a uh, some patchwork and you can kind of see where they had cut into the ceiling to put in these can lights and all these other stuff. And it's kind of like, you know, this could have been avoided and maybe not that much more expensive if they just would have ripped everything out and started over. It would have been faster too. Probably. Would have been a little Because we did, we, yeah. But anyway, hindsight, here we go. Yeah. Um, so, so we'll do those. We'll do a few remodels. So you do some big remodel work, mm-hmm. 60% ADU, and then you do some new construction ground up? Yeah. We'll do about two to three custom homes a year. That's usually, that's what we're averaging. Two or three custom homes a year five to 10 remodels. And then the rest of it is all multifamily. And next year, we're really kind of shifting the company focus. We'll, we'll probably do less remodels and we're doing more multifamily housing ADUs. Okay. So because of the new Senate bills, now all these multifamily housing developers and property management companies, they're now looking at garage, all the under underground, um, all the uh, tuck under parking, janitorial rooms, the old rec room, that could be a one bedroom ADU. Okay. So tell me more about that. Cause I'm, I'm, I try to keep up to speed with everything that's happening and yeah. all these Senate bills and laws yeah. and whatever else, but it's happening so fast. It's kind of hard. It's happening fast. I have a day job, right? I have to like keep right. up with all these like right. lending regulations. Right? right. Right. Um, and three kids and everything else. And then, and then let alone this legislature. So Brick, tell me like, what are the, what are the law changes? How is it impacting your consumer? So there's these new Senate bills. So again, we're, I consider myself an expert ADU builder. I'm not an expert in the laws. Sure. But there's a new Senate bill where it allowed multifamily housing um, developers and property owners to add ADUs to their properties. Okay. So I'll give you one example. Right now, we're building 17 ADUs on one complex. I saw this. You had, a, you had an Instagram reel about this. Yeah. 17 ADUs. And so you have a garages on the first floor and then on the second floor, you have the units. So we're converting about four of those. And then there's two storage, there's two store, uh, detached storages that were garages. We're building 10 ADUs on those. So there's about seven on, on the main buildings and then 10 on the storage. And that's one single owner. One single. So it's owner. a, it's a multifamily residential, like apartment type building. Yep. And they're finding interesting ways with this new Senate bill to add square residential square footage yep. to the, to the, to the property yep. and converting other space. So it's its own standalone rental unit. Correct. Smaller yeah. rental unit. Correct. And we have two other projects where we're building two, we're building three on a, on another property. Um, we're in the pipe and we're working on a deal where there's 30, 30 ADUs on one property, all tuck under conversions where there's another one where 59 Jeez. ADUs. To, and so remember how you asked me my background, Yeah, how, you know, Elaine and I were just talking the other day. It's, it's funny how my background in multifamily housing just kind of came full circle. Right. Again, because so you're managing multifamily, you understand it, you've been in these units, you that's know, that's yeah. really, you know, when I came back from New York, that's what I got into, you know, and I was a young, you know, I was 22 years old right. and I got right into it. And so I think that it's really helped us because a lot of these multifamily housing companies, they require a pound of meat every single day. They are not playing. They do not want a contractor to be taking six months for a conversion. Oh no. No, they want the slaughter fast every day. Right. And so that's how we move. Right. And so we've had management companies tell us, oh man, 
the guy that we hired, we were going to give you the job, but we hired somebody else for a little bit cheaper and he's still not done. And we've, we've done like four of them for them. Was cr- yeah, exactly. When you look at holding cost and opportunity cost and Hey, like all every single day that, that those 18 units or whatever are not being rented, that's real money. That's real money. Right. And so they're like, Hey, it's gotta get done. Yeah. And so a, a lot of times is these projects are not big enough for the big developer companies sure. to do. Right. And they're, they're not, but so what happens is you're getting these residential right. contractors. It's too big for that. You're getting the residential right. contractors doing these projects yep. and they don't have the background to yep. it. That makes sense. And so we we're kind of taking that as an opportunity for us. Yep. No, that's great. I mean, to, that, to excel. That's like, it sounds like a really amazing opportunity. Yep. Um, okay. So ADU construction. So I want to go back because you, we were talking, talking before about how you and your wife, this is you and your wife work together, right? So last week on the podcast, my wife was on the show and we were talking about, uh, how she's always kind of worked for the business, but not really officially. And she actually officially joined the company as like on payroll and does the whole thing. So I appreciate the dynamic, the husband and wife dynamic, but running the business, tell me kind of about how you guys are dividing and conquering and, and, uh, running the business together and how do you, how do you make it so it doesn't take over your entire life? So, you know, my wife is, she's, uh, Elaine is a brilliant girl. You know, she's really, really smart, double majored, always did well. She had straight A's. I don't know how she did it. She had straight A's most of her, you know, schooling. Um, and I've always admired her for, for how smart she, she was and, and, and the business mind that she, she's always had. Um, when I started my first company, I was stubborn. I didn't listen to her. And the first company didn't go the way it want, I wanted it to be. I had a bad partner, ended up in, in a lawsuit. A very common thing with partnerships. Never, I'll never go into another partnership again. You know, I, every, I have one partner and that's my wife. That, that's exactly, that's I've it. said the same thing. I, I don't need a business partner. I, I have a, uh, a spouse who I love and adore and we're partners yeah. and, uh, and that's it. That's yeah. all the partnership I need. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah it, it didn't work out. Um, so I ended up having to, you know, take it to court and he filed bankruptcy and, you know, my wife and, you know, that to me, um, I felt like I let my family down. Hmm. I felt like I let, you know, my kids were young. They were really young and I felt like I should have listened to her a little bit more, but you know, she just told me, you know what, you can, you were that company. That company failed because of something else right you can do it again get back up do it again and i just needed to hear that and so i got back up did it again nice dude and i mean that's a beautiful story yeah Yeah, that's really cool yeah and so our first year we did about seven in 2019 we did about seven hundred thousand. 2020 we did about a million and a half 2022 we did three 2023 we did eight and then this year we'll probably hit, probably do about 17 to 18. Incredible. Yeah. Thank goodness for her, man. Thank goodness for her going like, Hey, don't like, yeah, you took one on the chin, get up there, get out there and fight again. Like you still have responsibility to this family, like get up there and go fight. Yeah. And you know what? It was the best experience I've ever gone through that, mm-hmm. that whole failure of the first business that I had. I don't regret it at all. Oh, yeah. I'm actually very grateful that I went through that. It was the best lesson. College cannot teach you these things. Yep. You cannot learn this in college. You cannot. I mean, it's, it's, and, and so I dedicated my next company. I named it Integrum for a reason because I wanted to do things right. And I wanted to rebuild myself. And I wanted to, re, you know, build homes for the community and help people. And, and I wanted to do it with integrity. And so, um, my wife is a huge asset. So she's, she was in tech for about 10 years. She did channel sales. She was, um, uh, a, a director in sales. She had a lot of sales reps under her. Nice. So what we did is we took a lot of the tech sales tactics and we brought it to construction. Nice. And so we you're taking that the sales skills and kind of correct. Here's how you properly manage a funnel and making sure that you're like no idle time. Your crew stay busy and stay happy. And and that's what we've done. That's it. Year after year, we just continue. That's awesome, man. I'm really, that's, I love to hear those types of stories. And, and, um, I, I I agree, I agree with you. I have a, 
I have a master's degree in business and, and all oh, that's really great. I'm glad I went and got that experience, oh, but sure. there's nothing better in uh, business education than starting something on your own and failing and having it fall apart in front of you Yeah, because you take that personally. And they, like, I, I don't know how many nights of sleep you've oh. lost, but I've, I've lost countless n hours of sleep over, you know, business decisions and to my wife's credit, and you just said yours as well, she knew, she knew a lot of the times, a lot of the big mistakes that I've made, there's been plenty of them. We've talked about them before and she's like, Hey babe, uh, I think we really kind of think about this one. I'm like, nah, I, I think differently. I'm going to just, I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to take on this thing. I'm going to start this. I'm going to start that. And, uh, when things fall apart, you know, she's, she's always very kind, but she'll be like, Hey, remember that time, remember that conversation we had? This is what I was afraid of. And like, now we've got to pivot. So now what do we do? You know what I mean? So like my, uh, I think there's a really smart thing you said, listen to your spouse. They, they can yeah. see, they can see you and your skill set, and they can see from a different perspective, right? They're like one step removed from like being in it. Does that make sense? Yeah. And they, they have these, uh, how do I say it? God-given intuitions that they can just sense something is not right. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're, we're in, in our heads. We're like, no, 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 I got this. Yeah. And they're like, no, this is not going to work. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if, if Meg, my wife took a, like had a diary of all of the, these conversations we've had, we can probably go back and go, this one was avoidable because on June 16th, uh, 2020, you said the following, you know what I mean? Like if there's like a record of it. Yeah. Um, she, she good. just knows she totally does. And I, and I continue to, uh, learn to be open to feedback. And I think that's part of an entrepreneurial thing that I have is like, I think I know better, right? If I didn't know better, I'd work for somebody else. I wouldn't be an entrepreneur. Yeah. I'm a terrible employee. Oh, I, I'm an, I'm <laughs> unemployable. I'm unemployable. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I can't imagine working a nine to five. No, like crazy. I work nine to five. I've worked eight to nine. I don't know. I work all the time. Yeah. Right. And I just love it. I love what I do. I love helping people. I love making connections. Like I love talking to people. It's the, it's the best. I love what I do. Yeah. But I, I am unemployable as like, a, if I had to go work at, I used to work at a bank. Like if I had to show up wearing a suit and tie every day and like clock in, oh like no, clock out at noon. No, no, I can't do no. it. I will say though, in between time, in between, when I, when my first company, when I, when I left my first company, um, and in between starting Integrum, I did have a bridge job Okay, and I worked for a high end builder. <laughs> How'd that go for you? Walto. Yeah. Uh, it, I'll always be grateful for them because sure. I, I needed that bridge. Yeah. I needed that stability time to kind of get my mind going and starting up Integrum, but I was going crazy. Yeah. yeah like if I had I to, nuts. if I had to, yeah, I could suck it up and yeah. you know, be nice and put, find yeah. my old, not that I'm fit anymore, but I had to go get some new suits and like make it work. Um, but I, I don't think I would be happy. No. I think I'd be miserable trying no. to. Uh, and it's not them. No, no, no. It's, great it's a me. It's yeah. a me thing. Yeah, exactly. You know? So yeah, I, I, I'm, you know, I got the podcast thing, got the mortgage company. We're kind of, we're all over the place. Right. And which is, which is fun for me. I like the crazy. It's fun. So, um, in addition to your, uh, construction company and everything else that you're doing, you also invest in real estate. I want to talk about that a little bit. So what are you investing? So. I think there's an idea out there that it's impossible to own real estate in California, especially in the Bay area. It's too expensive. And that may be true in some markets. Right. Um, but you're, you're investing, owning different types of properties and doing your thing. So kind of tell us about your, your personal journey in, in real estate. Yeah. So my personal journey was, um, we built our first house in 2016. We bought it off our in-laws, my, my wife's uh, parents. Um, we built that at the time, Sunnyvale was not that hot. It was, it was, it was good. You know, homes were 800,000, 900,000 in the neighborhood. So we bought it and we, <laughs> we built a new home. Okay. Right? A starter home, you know, basic, simple house. And I didn't really, I was like, eh, we probably broke even on it. Not a big deal. Sure. That house is not worth double. It's probably worth about one, one eight. And it happened in like six, seven years. You still own it? Is that where you live yeah, now? Yeah, that's where I live now. Okay. 
Uh, and that's when my eyes were like, oh my goodness, like this is, and then I built the house. So that's why it made sense. Right. Because we built it. Right. If I didn't build it and I had to hire someone, then I would be, no, I would be. You would have made money, but not that much. No, not that much. Right. So that's when I was like, okay, what if I do this two, three, four, five times? Right. Right. And that's. Go slow, find the right properties, take your time. That's right. right. That's right. So when I started Integrum, cash flow was great. Profits were great. And I promised myself, I'm not going to blow this opportunity. And you, you can't imagine how many times contractors, they do great for the first five years. They blow their money, man. Boats and you name it. I think contractors and mortgage lenders are, are a lot the same. Dude, they just. I mean, it's, an, it's absolutely crazy. I it's like, oh, we had the best year ever. Let's adjust our cash flow and our spending to make it so every single year has to be the best year ever. Like, no, it's, it's, stay small, man. Yeah. And my, I actually really want to shout out my sister. My, my sister was a realtor in, for a long time and she killed it um, during the recession. Gosh, she just bought a ton of property and then she retired early. Oh, because nice. Because she's just living off the rental income. Yeah. And so she told me, you're doing good right now. This may not always last. Save your money and buy property. So I promised myself, yep. I'm not going to blow it. Nice. I'm not going to get to the Super Bowl. You have Bowl. some smart, you have some really smart, talented ladies in your life, man. I do, man. My sister's, my sister's really, really smart. Very, very smart. So um, in 20, we saved up our money. We bought our first property in Cupertino, right by Abel. Bought it cheap. Well, not cheap. Relative. It, it's all relative, right? Cheap for Cupertino. Cheap for cheap for Cupertino. It's very expensive in, in uh, Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nebraska. It's like no one can buy that house. <laughs> so um, that property we bought right after the COVID wave. Okay. Like right when things kind of came down uh, after everybody overpaid for their homes. Um the, the beauty of this house is that it's right by Apple. You can walk to the, to the uh, visiting center for the dome. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got 14,000 square feet lot, which is very rare. Yeah, that's a huge lot. Huge. Got a beautiful redwood tree in the back. Gorgeous. So we bought that. We're developing it right now. Okay. We're going to have a 3,000 square foot house. No, 3,400 square, 3, square foot house with an ADU and a junior ADU. So it's pretty okay. much three doors. So what are you doing with that? Are you going to keep it and rent it? Are you going to sell it? What's your... I don't know yet. <laughs> it, <laughs> to be determined. To be determined. Okay. Uh, I think we'll fall in love with the house. The intention was to live there for sure. We're, we're going oh, okay. we're gonna, we're gonna, to you know, live there, uh, raise our kids there, and um, we'll see what happens. But uh, I, I, I'm, I, me and Elaine were talking about it the other day. If the price is right, we might, <laughs> we might sell it. <laughs> We've had this, we have this debate because we, we own our... Our first home that we bought in 2012, we still own that house. It's a rental here in town. Bought a new house on the on the west side. Um, probably similar timing to you. It was uh, just before the COVID, everything happened. It was spring of 19, right? So right early days. So uh, we've been there for what five years now, and there are you know there are days where I look at a house. So we just saw one that came up in historic downtown Petaluma. That just you know. That just came on the market and I'm like, let's sell everything and buy this house because it is friggin' amazing. I love this house. And my wife's like, yes, this is so great. I love that house. No, we're not selling anything. No, calm down. I'm like, ah, I want, I want you to be excited too. Let's go sell everything. Yeah. Show me that. You, you gotta show me that house. Uh, it's, it. it's sweet. Anyway. It? Yeah. Nice. 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 Yeah. No, I mean, this thing's going to be, it's, I have my office being built back there. That's the ADU. Yeah. Uh, we hired an amazing architect. She's incredible. Um, so we'll see what happens. So that's our first, that's the first property we bought. Aside from the house that we live in now. Got it. So technically it's our second house. Um, then shortly after, I bought a house cash in Richmond during Labor Day. Yeah, during Labor Day, no one saw it. It's, it the house is 800 square feet, the one one, but the garage was detached. Huge garage that was built in the 70s excellent condition hmm. so my eyes lit up bought it right away and uh got it for three hundred thousand dollars in richmond nice in a decent neighborhood too and so shout out to my realtor did you uh convert are you converting that to be done already converted done it's converted so i got a studio i got a two bedroom one bath and then i'm doing an addition on the main home 
So here's something, you know, so if you're listening and you're, you know, property owner, investor, think about how much wealth and income potential you're creating, right? Because you've got the original house, right? That's renting. Your, your cost is fixed on, because you probably have a small mortgage on that house or you bought it all cash or whatever, cash. right? So no debt on it. So, so at this point, you're looking at the return on your equity, right? The return on like, what, what is the effective rate of return that you're getting on that money that you put into it? So you put in your 300K plus whatever your renovation and uh, at addition cost is. So you add all that up and then you're looking at three sources of income, right? That stabilizes your income base. So if you lose one tenant, you're not losing all of your income from that property and your the rental market continues to accelerate. So if you have a great product, right? I'm imagining looking at the pictures on your website, I'm sure the house is beautiful. Oh, the garage conversion is, it's amazing. Right. It's beautiful. Yeah. So you're getting top dollar per month. Like your rate of return on that must be incredible. I'm not sure if you've calculated that, but it must be really great. So if you own a rental property and you're like, Hey, you know, I'm seeing all these things about you know, doing a 1031 exchange and selling this and buying out of state because you can get more houses and more income or that. Like that is totally an option, you know, check into that, look into that, but also don't sleep on the idea of, you know, building out a, building out a garage, building out of this, building out of that. Now we'll have to talk about this offline, but our, our rental property has a two car detached garage that is, I believe, perfect for, uh, an ADU above and a small ADU and one of the, and a junior ADU and one of the, um, garage bays. Um, but I am, so it was so funny. I take risk all the time, but with this like particular thing, I'm like, oh man, how am I going to do it? And I'm like wringing my hands at it. So I'll have to pick your brain on it and see what, yeah, you, what yeah, you think. Yeah. But anyway, it's no, a, yeah. it's a really cool opportunity to expand. So like in my, in my situation, your situation, you know, our tenant paying pretty good rent for our three, two, we got there and it's like, Hey, but if I can add a, there are two additional one bedrooms onto the property, like Maybe my rental income from the main house goes down a little bit from where I'm, from where I'm at now because they don't have the garage anymore. Right. But that way more than offsets it by the other Correct. two units that are there. That's right. Like that's crazy. That's right. That's, oh, there's always that little tip in the scale, sure. but at the end of the day, you still come yeah. up. Fascinating. So if you're like, you know, thinking about this idea of how do I, if I'm, especially if I'm planning for retirement, I'm looking for non-traditional income streams, I'm trying to diversify, um, might be a really cool opportunity for people to think outside the box and go, how do I create like more than one living unit on my, pro on my rental property yeah. and find ways to make that work? Yeah. And, and sometimes it, it, it doesn't because, you know, there's people who do not want to be involved in construction at all. Sure. It won't pencil sometimes. Right. Because then you have to pay a premium for the GC to do everything for you. There goes all your equity gain. There goes... Sure. All your profit, right? So sometimes it doesn't pencil, but if you want to be involved in the construction, you want to do all some owner builder stuff. Sure. There's always possible to do that. There's always there's always a good opportunity. So that that that's Richmond. We're gonna have three three doors in Richmond. Then I bought another property two months after that in Napa, where I just finished it. It's a rehab. Uh, it was a distressed property, right? It two minutes from Oxbow. Are you familiar okay. with Napa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two minutes from Oxbow, you can across the streets, uh, the Bottle Rock. Oh yeah, I can. You can like literally, you can listen to the music. The neighbors get their lawn chairs and just sit on and the they lawn, just chill and nice. listen to the music. Awesome neighborhood, amazing neighborhood. The house was a turd. Gutted it, um, converted the garage to an attached ADU, an actual ADU. Nice. And then I added a master suite to it. And then right now we have plans. So I have renters going for that. I'm getting 4,500 for the main house and I'm getting 1,700 for the attached ADU. Crazy. So depending on what your cost is there, I mean, that's dude, it's strong. Three days. I put it on Zillow, yep. three days. Boom. I mean, people are just Napa's, Napa's excellent to invest. I actually am looking more in Napa. So, I mean, again, I think this is a good point for the, for the show is, you know, I, I keep hearing people like, ah, oh, you just got to sell what I've got here in the, in the Bay area. And I got to go out of the, if I want to get return on my equity and return on my money, I got to go to a different market. There's like, deals out there. There's deals out there. You just have to look There's deals and be willing to do and be willing to do the work to yeah, make and, it happen. And I have a few realtors that are always looking for me. 
Nice. Yeah, you, I kind of follow, kind of keep up on yeah. like, hey, look look for more deals. And, and I know there's a lot of uh, <laughs> real estate pros that listen to the show. So we'll make sure all your contact information is in the yeah. show notes. So if you've got something that would be interesting, you know, obviously you could reach yeah. out and, 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 and chat with Sergio yeah, and yeah, go yeah. from there. So in Napa, in the backyard, um, Bill Casa, have you ever heard of Bill Casa? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Their, their, their headquarters is in Oakland. Yes. So this is an organization cool to have them on your podcast, man. That's an amazing organization. So what they do is, um, they help, uh, homeowners who have huge lots. They help them lot split and sell off the lot and develop. The lot. Okay. I've heard of the, I've heard of them, but I guess I didn't really understand what they did. So this is a really, this SB9. happens a lot in the, in the, in the North Bay where, where I am. And this is actually when I work for a developer, we did a lot of this where you have a big rectangular shaped lot. This is a very standard kind of construction from the forties and fifties and sixties. Um, and you have like a, a deep triangular or rectangular shaped lot and the house, it's like right in the middle of it. Right. And so what we had been doing was take that, take the house, pick it up. Oh yeah. Move it, put it to the front of the, towards the, towards the street, right. On a new foundation and then do it easement and a lot split. So you have mm -hmm. access to the back lot through the side yeah. and then either sell the back lot or develop it. Yeah. And that's an amazing, like it's cool. Again, it speaks to, there's so many different ways to, to play in real Incredible. estate. You can just it's buy Tetris, man. You, know, you can go buy, you know, an eight unit apartment building and, and get good returns and do that. And you can do a ground up construction, you know, taking a, a underutilized land and do an infill projects. You can do this lot split thing. You can do an ADU. Like yeah. you could, there's so many different ways to, you know, to make money in real estate. And I just wish that people would, you know, think more creatively. Or they you just know? need to be informed. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are just not. You and know, by listening to this show, man, they're yeah, getting out. I, I know, right? <laughs> so in Napa, what Bill Costa is doing is we just got planning approval. Okay. Um, again, just like you said, I'm going to lose a little bit of money on the main home. But what they're doing is we're not lot splitting now, but I can. Right. I don't have to lot split. <laughs> I'm building two duplexes. I'm building a duplex in the backyard. Nice. Well, that's amazing. So I'll have, that's going to be a fourplex. Yeah. It's a fourplex compound. That's like amazing. This. I mean, that's, it's really, it's really, really smart and it's underutilized land and you got to, and the cool thing is I have clients who reach out and like, Hey, I want to buy land and buy and, and build, you know, do you know how expensive that is? Like land financing is not cheap. You, there's a lot of risk in, in buying dirt, right? More risk than buying a house. So what, the smart thing here is that you're, you're getting like conventional Fannie Mae financing potentially if you didn't buy all cash, right? Cheap, relatively cheap money. And you get to buy the house and the land all wrapped up into one. And you're going to do your lot split, build other stuff, do your thing. And you're, and, and you don't have to go through the hassle of putting down, you know, 40 or 50% down on a, on a lot purchase, right? So we got a lot of people, I get calls every week. Hey, I saw this lot. I want to. I want to buy it and build on it. Okay, great. Sounds good. We've got solutions for you. How much cash do you have? Yeah, because you can't get a commission. We have 5% down. I'm sorry. Nope. You're out of luck. Nope. Like it just doesn't work. Do it. Right. So go buy the house for 5% down. Do that all day, mm -hmm. you know, and then improve the, and improve the back of it and do a lot, but do the work. Yeah, exactly. Right now, um, my realtor, he has a pocket listing, um, in Wanna Creek shy of half an acre it's got a crap house on it and we're ready to make the deal that's great i mean as long as it's a the deal as long as it's a f financeable doesn't have to be pretty no yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the yeah. thing and People, it's financeable yeah it's it's, it's financeable. as long as it's in it's safe safe and sound it doesn't have to be pretty yeah. it doesn't have to be brand new yeah yeah really hoping i can get that property but no those are the deals you hit it on the nose those are the deals we're not really looking for lots right we're looking for ugly homes nice area, big lots. And Silicon Valley is not the ideal place, to, in my opinion. He, here's why. Sure. It's, it's not really an ideal place to buy and build to rent out because the lots are really expensive. Yes. By the time I'm done building it, the return right. is not really good there. Right. I think in Silicon Valley, it's better to buy, build, flip sell oh yeah right but in richmond napa you know these areas it's worth building keeping long term and then renting for for me it makes a lot of sense i mean you're you're like the re the re relation relationship between 
uh, cost and in, in rental income is more in line in those markets you described. It's going to be really, really low rates of return. That's right. We're dealing with, you know, the dirt alone in Silicon Valley might be a million dollars just for the dirt. It's crazy. I mean, look at the property that we own in Cupertino. Uh, let's say I develop it, right? The ADU and the main home. No one's going to pay me 25 grand a month to rent out that house. Hey. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe a, a Niner player because we're close to, you know, the yeah. Niners facilities and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, they've got cash. They'll just buy. The, yeah, it doesn't make, <laughs> doesn't really make Or they'll want it fully furnished. Something. Exactly. Um, yeah, I, I think it's really cool. I, I really appreciate you coming on the show and kind of chatting through the different, you know, different styles and to what you guys are doing at your, at your company. Congratulations on all your success. And, you. and more importantly, man, Hey, I want to say first and foremost, like financial success is one thing, but it sounds like you and your wife have really created a beautiful life together. And that's the number one thing. So congrats on that. Thank you. And, uh, uh really, you know, really, we just met each other, but really proud to hear that, you know, you, you, you took one on the chin, you got back up and you've created something really special for you. Going to leave an amazing legacy for you and your family. So Good, good job, dude. That's really, really that, amazing. Man. Thank you for having me. Um, if people want to get a hold of you, I'll make sure that all your contact information is in the show notes. If you have a lot that you want uh, Sergio to take a look at, uh, that's totally cool. If you need some input or help on, you know, looking at uh, building an accessory dwelling and you're down in the Sunnyvale, Silicon Valley area, um, we'll make sure people reach out to you. Where, geographically, how far do you guys go? Yeah, so we do- Hard to drive far when you're doing so many projects, right? Yeah, so we, <laughs> yeah, right. So we, we do uh, South of San Francisco. Okay. We'll do the entire San Francisco Peninsula, Silicon Valley. You hit San Jose, you do that loop. We'll usually stop around Hayward area. Okay. And then we'll do the entire Tri Valley. So we'll do Danville, Wanna Creek. Oh, that's that's actually pretty far. Yeah. That's a that's yeah. a pretty big geography. But you know, once you get into like Berkeley, Oakland, mm -hmm. it's really hard to get or like Marin. Yeah. That's where it gets hard because of all the bridges. Yeah. Traffic. You won't cross too many bridges. Just San Mateo Bridge once in a while. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Cool. Well, yeah, exactly. Right on, man. Well, hey, um, really appreciate your time and your expertise. Thanks for making the trip up here and then appreciate you being a listener and reaching out. And that's yeah, really right. cool that we we're able to connect. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Right thank, thank, we'll have you back. All right, man. See ya. Bye. Stay up to date with Bay Area Real Estate. Hit subscribe now if you haven't already. Did you enjoy this episode? We love reviews in the Apple Podcasts app. We'll read yours on the show. This is By the Bay. Landon Ear Media.